So welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And uh, today we're doing our WBC 2023 debrief. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's a bit late. We went a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and by the time this gets released, who knows? <laughs> That's what it is. I think we've already had at least one WBC video play so we've had, far. We've had two. two. Yep. And we've uh, got probably four. And or that's five at the time we're recording. Yeah, four. there's at least three or four ready for release. So I don't know if I'm going to squeeze this in before. So who sure. knows when you're watching this? Uh, but I just wanted to kind of sit down and talk a little bit about our WBC experience this year, uh, which was a little bit more eventful. Than it was. It was just, very interesting, frankly. Uh, so did not go the way that I that I thought it would go. No. Uh, so, so if you hadn't been paying attention on kind of Twitter or reading Grant's blog posts that he's done kind of through that or after that, um, we had booked an extra few days. I think we, this was the longest time that mm -hmm. we had booked to go there that we'd ever done. Uh, and so I think we left very early Tuesday morning. Uh, yeah, you showed up at my house like at, I thought you said like eight and you showed up at my house about seven I was there seven ten, like, yeah, <laughs> which, which is fine. It got us off a bit earlier, and but yeah, and it's and it's just over a six hour drive from uh, Indianapolis over to the Seven Springs Mountain Resort. Uh, and I guess before we go any further, what is WBC? Just for those who don't know, WBC. What does WBC stand for? Alexander? It stands for the World Board Gaming Championships. Uh, you know, like the World Series and. Blah, blah, blah. This is the World Board Gaming yes, Championship. Yes. And frankly, there are all different types of folks there. We, we played with people from Australia, the Philippines, uh, there's, uh, others. Pete from England, yeah. Pericles last year. Yeah. He was there again. Oh, he, Pete was there again. Yep. Did he say hi? Nope. Okay. All right. I don't think Pete liked us, but I don't that's know okay. If he, I don't know if he recognized <laughs> but like. But yeah, there's pe people come from all over. Yeah. Now, it is also a lot of like East Coast guys. I mean, I, I would from, say it's 95%. You know, from from America, but but it's this big board gaming convention, um, and I think they say there's like uh, three thousand people there over the take. course of just over a week. Mm -hmm. And I actually felt like this year it was much more crowded this year from what I saw than the, in, in the, a couple of years past. Yeah, I think the past two years it was a bit on the slower side. Mm -hmm. um, I think this year it was a bit more back to how it was when we first started going, like 2017, yeah. 2018, for sure. Well, that was a long time ago. <laughs> right. But, uh, so, it, this this big convention, it's held at a ski resort in the middle of the summer. So there's no snow. No, no snow, but <laughs> it's like nice views and it's out yeah. pretty and, isolated. And they have a nice, I mean, the facility's nice. It's got like a nice restaurant that kind of looks out over the slopes and, you know, it, it, it works pretty well for a... Gaming yes. convention. It is a long walk from the room, the hotel side, to the gaming side. I bet it's nearly half a half a mile. It feels like, but it feels that way. And and if you're not on site, you can stay in like Donegal or in Somerset, and, and people like commute, and it's and like we've, a 20, 25 minute drive. We've, we've done that yeah. multiple years. Um, but they, you know, it's there's lots and lots of tournaments there. Mm -hmm. It's the World Board Gaming Championship, so they'll hold like a tournament for like, and it's and it's like everything, everything. under the sun. Yeah, Combat Commander, Here I Stand, type, MBT, type, yeah, yeah, and then also like other board Euro World, games, World Baseball Series card game, yeah. or whatever. Like there's a, there's a tournament for like everything, mm -hmm. um, and it's really neat to see people going and doing that. Some of the tournaments are a bit more serious than others. I think mm -hmm. some of them people just like sign up, or some people for take it more seriously. Yeah, and they're in it kind of for the long haul because they want to win. But a lot of people use it as an excuse to like. Learn a new game, and they'll not get knocked out in the first round. But like, everyone's very pleasant, very accommodating about that kind of thing. Yeah. It's a way to kind of experience different games. And, and frankly, it's our favorite convention. I mean, yeah. we we love Gen Con. We really like Buckeye Game Fest. But I think WBC is really where it's at, particularly for what we do. Yes, wanting to talk to designers and publishers, and and then play big war games. So, well, I think that's one of the hallmarks of WBC is that. Especially when we first started going there, it was kind of staggering how many designers and developers and publishers were there, and yeah. you could just go and talk to them. So that we sat down with so many people uh, that other conventions we've been to, it's not quite as prolific as that. So that I mean, we went to Gen Con just last weekend, and and we, you know, Jason Matthews and Darren Leveloff and David Thompson. You know, we we saw a couple designers, but. 
that, trying, that's not really but what trying it's to about. find them in seventy thousand people. Oh, it, it, it's a challenge. And find somewhere to sit down. That's yeah. it's, WBC has got this really relaxed nature to it, mm -hmm. whilst still being quite big. So it's easy to find players. There's plenty of open gaming space to play whatever size game you want. People playing little two-player games. People yeah. playing massive games of Twilight Imperium and everything in between as well. Uh, so it's a general overview is what WBC is like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it. And you have to be a member of the Board Game Players Association, yes. B BPA. So I, it's I, BPA's WBC. It's a really small fee. I, I'm trying to remember what the fee is. There, there's like an annual fee that gives you like good pricing on the tickets. Right. Because it's a non-profit organization. And, yeah. And they have a massive games library. They do. That like that your entry is like you can free and sign up whatever game and mm. play it. So, yeah. Heartily recommend going. No doubt. If, if you've never been, it's a 10 out of 10 gaming experience. Uh, we've been a, a gosh. Ha, have, we been, have we been five times or four? One, two, three, four. I think this was our fourth year. Yeah, I, I think it was the fourth because we missed obviously 2020 and 21, 21 I think. I think. two years they didn't yeah. do. But yeah, it's, it, it's wonderful and uh, part, part of it is you know, it's just a great location as well. Yeah, it's a six-hour yeah. drive, but it's always a fun drive going from the Midwest over in, uh, to, like, the East Coast. And it's very beautiful. I mean, the, the, yeah. the countryside through Pennsylvania is very, you, very beautiful. You, you pull off that turnpike, and all of a sudden, it's like, hey, we're, like, in the mountains mm -hmm. and, like, on these little winding roads going up to the place. Yeah. It's really cool. Uh, so... We did a big long journey there. We filmed a video in the car on the way there. We did. Uh, which, that is on our channel. Go watch that. And that was a cool video because we'd been talking about that one probably for a couple of years. Yes. And it was basically, you know, war games that we didn't necessarily connect with or enjoy. Yeah. We've played them. Some we played multiple times. Some we gave up halfway through because of rules or, or different issues. But that, that was interesting to talk about. I, I thought we did it in a respectful manner. It's not oh, like yeah, we thrashed no to, yeah, anything. There's no need to dog on games. But I, I, I think those are, typically some of them are games that we didn't necessarily even do review, review videos No, a lot of, of them we didn't. I think there's only a couple we had. Some of them we did. You know, one person was like, well, you, you said Tank Duel was disappointing. But when I looked at your review, you guys were like, it was kind of fun. And, and frankly, it was fun. Yeah, th there's parts of it that, that are fun, and I can see why people yeah, it, like it. And it's a big multiplayer game. We played with four people. We had a good time. I just thought there were things that disappointed yeah. us about it. And, and we had a good time with our friends. Yeah. And we played a game. Well, and I think we played it after the fact, and it, I was just like, oh, yeah. It I, didn't have that same Maybe I don't control. like that as much. Yeah. But that was a game that... I think initially we, we kind of liked, and some of those games we didn't like from the get-go. No. Some of those games we played <laughs> multiple times because the rules were poor and we would get like updates or upgrades to the rules or questions, and frankly it didn't necessarily change it. But I, I thought that was a fun video yeah. to record. Very engaging, 40 minutes. I think people have enjoyed it, and heck, it's got a lot of views on it, which well, is and it was nice to crazy. relive some of those it was. treasured memories. Yeah. <laughs> People commented about my my deep sighs every time. Part of that was I, I was having it, I watched it back because of that comment and watching it through that lens, hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I did it at almost every game, but I also did it because I was having a little bit of health problems, even yes. even on the drive out, and was having a little trouble with catching my breath. So I I, I looked at it kind of like that. I thought I looked a little green in the gills. As no, well. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I felt peaked. Also, but yeah, that was fun doing that video, and we've we've really enjoyed doing car videos. We we kind of rack our brain and think about okay, what can we do now? And yeah, we've got a trip coming up. We're going to Noble Night yeah, here are. in a, about a month, and we got like a six hour drive up there and a six hour. So I'm like, we could do two or three. We, we got to figure. And it I want to come up with some good topics. So if you have suggestions for topics for those kinds of videos, put them in the comments. And keep in mind, we we can't like dive through rules or it, no, it's got to be an informal chat yeah it's got to be on a subject thing. that we don't have to do a lot of homework or research i mean we could do some research beforehand but yeah i'm not going to be driving and trying to no articulate anyway yes so <laughs> yeah check that video out I, yeah. I think it's a fun video i've watched it and enjoyed watching it uh, and we even put it together so yes. that's kind of funny yeah we did that and then, so we got there we we arrived at wbc after a brief detour 
uh, on the turnpike. <laughs> That's our exit. Because we were talking too much. That was my fault. We were talking too much. Yeah. And the time flies. And, uh, and, and the turnpike is one of those things that you can't do Yui. Now, we, we found a spot to do a Yui. <laughs> we actually passed the first one. And I, I regretted that because it was probably another five miles to the next one. But I'm always nervous about that kind of thing. I feel Because like I don't want to get a ticket, right? I don't want to get a ticket. No offense to Pennsylvania, but that turnpike has an exit every 20 miles. And it's like, yeah. 20 miles feels like a long time. Oh, it's a terribly long and time. And so it was like, oh my gosh. But so, it, so that <laughs> added about, I think, about 30 minutes to our trip. And I, re I regret but that. We, but we... Uh, Got, we got to the got to the place. We're even. Remember, we we oh, said we were even. We're even. One of our first trips to WBC. I think it was our second trip. Maybe it was our first one. We had stayed out in what we colloquially called the murder hobo shack. That was the, it. Was the second right trip. up right up against the interstate, um, and we had driven in the twenty minute drive, and we're getting ready to set up for an interview, and you're like, oh, I, forgot, I, forgot, I forgot the I camera. I forgot the trunk, and it was like eight a.m. in the morning. Yeah, so I had to. Drive 25 minutes back out, get it, drive 25. So that was something I've lorded over Alexander's head for like six years now. He's, he's done it in his brain, and I had forgotten about that it happened. Right. And so he brought oh, it I, up. I was like, oh, we're even now. Kept it, and like, then we're finally even. even. And then I think I made it. Uh, you know, my, my illness was kind of now Now I'm in the debt. <laughs> so whatever. But, but we, uh, we got there, and the first thing we did is we uh, sat down with uh, Greg Smith. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of a tradition at this point. Uh, well, and, and, and I'm going to say it, Greg is a friend yes. a, as well. He's not just the designer that we play his games. And, and we've made some comments about, you know, like Zeppelin, Zeppelin Raider, I just didn't really like that much, right? Yeah. Bomber, uh, American Bomb, America Bomber, I, I didn't really like as much. Now, some of the others, man, they're really good. Yes. Interceptor Ace and Night Fighter Ace and... But he's a friend, yes. right? And and we have a very good relationship and enjoy seeing him every year. And that's typically been our first thing that we do is go sit down with him. And that's that we did. We sat down, had a chat about some things, and then we just kind of turned the camera on. So we got a 40 minute interview with him that we did. He sh was showing us Rebel Tide, which is the newest in his kind of Tide series. American Civil War. Uh, yeah, so it's American Civil War using that uh, CDG system, which is really cool. Uh, and then he also had prototypes for British Tank Ace and a few other things that he's got in the pipeline as well. Gotha Raider, which is World War One German bombers over England. Yep. And I think that's going to uh, Paper Wars, a magazine game. Yes, yes, that's what, what he was, said, yeah. What was the fourth one? He to... had mentioned... It's in the video, but... He mentioned Atlantic Sentinels, but that's already kind of on the docket. That's yeah, I'm drawing a blank now. EU. But Yeah, we talked about four different games. Yeah, that's going to Oh, Carrier more. Leader. Ah. Or Carrier uh, Ace. Yes. Not Leader. Leader would be a DVG <laughs> series. Carrier Ace. So he's doing a game in the Pacific. Yes. And was talking about that. So that uh, that's one I'm very excited about. You know how we enjoy the yes. Pacific Theater of World War II. But yeah, always a pleasure to sit down with Greg. Uh, I like his name, Greg, because it's also the first part of the word gregarious, and I think that is, fits his personality at times. Yeah, he's he, a good dude. He's a really, really cool guy. Uh, so that and he gave us he gave us a gift. I I, I will say that he. Do, do you it's have, over there on my shelf. Okay, I'm not going to go get no. it, but it it's a early prototype little statue of fat fat man. Yep. You know, fat man, little boy. I don't even know what it is, like a candy dish? Like, you pull the top off, you could put, like, candy in there or yeah. dice or something. <laughs> i got to figure out a use for it. Yeah, I, I've got mine on my shelf. and it'll, <laughs> it'll a bomb on the shelf. Yeah, it, it, it's a bomb on the shelf, so yeah. we appreciate that. Yeah, you could say that's a bribe, but I'm, I'm not going to review his games. I'll accept, I'll accept that. It's positively, a... <laughs> because he gave me a, a statue, a memorabilia. That I will put on my desk at work, sure. threateningly. <laughs> yeah. You mess with me, I'm going to set this sucker off. <laughs> So but yeah, that was wonderful to see him again. Uh, always a fan. Always take whatever of games of his rule books that came out, have him sign those. Yeah. Um, we went to dinner, and then after that, we had um, a kind of a learning session of Border Reavers from uh, Ed yeah. Beach. So finally got to meet, meet Ed Beach. Um, he signed. He signed my "Here I Stand" rule book. You Not can, really a signature. You can see because he wrote his name on it. Uh, <laughs> and, and I'm going to be honest. Ed, Ed is a very interesting fellow. Oh, great! great. He, he he has designed some of our favorite games. Here I stand, Virgin Queen, 
Border Reavers. I, very, very cool guy. And, and you can tell just in our couple of hours with him, there's a serious passion for historical yes. settings and war games. And I mean, he talked for a good 40 minutes in the discussion of the game about the history of the English Scottish border there. And I'm like, man, I wish I would have turned the camera on as he was explaining that to us. But Say la vie. We, yeah. we missed that opportunity. Yeah, so we've been trying to sit down with Ed Beach and like maybe play Here I Stand for a few mm -hmm. years and just, he's usually there for the first half of the con and we're usually yeah. there for the second half. Which of starts the... on Saturday and goes through the following Sunday. Yeah. We typically go on Tuesday and leave it on just, Sunday. It just never happened. Yeah. It finally happened this year and it was pretty much the last thing that he did. He left like the next morning or afternoon. Yeah. So thanks Ed for sitting down with us. Absolutely. He taught us Border Reavers. Um, and really a fantastic game. Very, very different. Very different style of game, which yep. was so cool to kind of do that. But like you said, his passion and his knowledge of like all the games that he's done, but also specifically this one was riveting, yeah. honestly. Uh, I, this game takes about 20 minutes to teach, and he taught it for about an hour because we got like all of the juicy details of mm -hmm. the history and like the design and development process and like he was able to take a copy of this over there to some of these locations mm -hmm. that are written on the map and the different museums and historical sites and take sure. pictures with the people who like run those and just hearing all of that and the, and the little depth of knowledge that he has about this that it's difficult to glean from yeah. the game itself was, it was just really enjoyable. Well, I and, loved it. And it's a very interesting game because it's I'm not going to call it a Euro game, but it has a lot of Euro-like mechanics. I also wouldn't call it a war game. I wouldn't though. call it, but it has it has warfare and fighting. But it's like you have this little tableau of cards, which include lords and ravers, and you get like animals and different special abilities. It, it, very interesting. Your currency is cattle. You, you know, you you kind of sell cattle to buy things, and then you got to develop you got to build your horse army up um, so you can go out and raid. You're raiding the other farmers around you and stealing their livestock. Yeah. As well as fighting armies coming through. And then, like, um, but, like, you'll wrestle. So you take their sheep, and then you got a bunch of sheep, and so everyone's like, I'm going to well, target you that guy. sheep now. Yeah. So, it, it, but also, you have that little hand of action cards yep. that limits what you can do. Well, it, it's like an action selection. And there were eight cards? Was it eight or six? I think it was seven or eight. Seven, I seven or eight, yeah. But those coincided to the different marches. And there was one that was kind of a wild where you could go anywhere or do anything. And there was one that allowed you to switch the card you played after people revealed. That was kind of cool. I, I was holding on to mine. Um, but you play those and then you're going to attack that march. And... You go in there and you either fight an army or you raid and take livestock. And ultimately what you're trying to do is amass uh, honor points or fame points, victory points, uh, by defeating armies and stealing sheep and building up your castles. Uh, just a very unique and interesting different game. And it plays six players. Yes. Which is very, very unique. And not, not for Ed's games, but very unique in the yeah. wargaming world. And what they said was is... You either play it four player or six player. You can't play it five player. And I think less than four, you it's start not, to lose some yeah. of the joy of the game where it's like yeah. a bit, bit of chaos in there. So we played six. I, for, for the hour plus that we played it, even though we only played one year or yeah, one two, which is round. Two, which is like two rounds. Or two rounds. You know, I, I started to get ill in the middle of it. I, I had not been feeling great all day. In fact, two to three weeks beforehand, I had dealt with nausea and just from a, a medicine reaction that I was having. And we were sitting there and I'm just like, I, I can't do this anymore. So I excused myself. I felt very bad about it because we were doing a six player and then everybody kind of had to give up, um, yes. which sucked. But I think it we got... It sucked because we were having a good time. Yeah, it was really fun. I was even having a good time, yeah. even though I felt like dog crap. But I, I went back to the room. It took me forever to get back to the room, by the way. I, I, it took, I just walked so slowly. Um, and then that's when my adventure started. Let's and, tell them about your adventure. Well, I, I don't want to go into too much detail. <laughs> I do have a post on the blog that kind of has... I don't care about HIPAA. I mean, go ahead. You can know everything that's going on with me. But 
so, so I'd been put on some new drugs for my diabetes. I've been a diabetic for about 16 and a half years. Uh, my endocrinologist wanted to try a couple of things because I have a lot of ups and downs. And you've seen it, right? We've yeah. been here. We'll eat dinner. I'll take a little bit too much insulin. And in two hours, I'm the, the bottom's falling out. And I'm like glazing over. You and, can hear the beep beep on the phone. Yeah, right? and, and I'm having to go eat whatever, drink some orange juice or eat some, some candy. So, so he wanted to put me on some new drugs that are supposed to be designed to kind of stabilize you. And I've been on those since early June and they were working. My, my blood sugar was not as up and down. It was more even, even through the night, I was not dropping off. So there was, there was results, but there were side effects. There was some nausea. He said that was normal, extreme fatigue. He said that was normal and that eventually I would get used to that. Well, three or four weeks later, I still hadn't necessarily gotten used to it and it was getting kind of worse. I felt bad that day driving out uh, with border ravers. I, I had to excuse myself. I went back to the room and then started a, a, about an eight hour kind of chunkathon where I just visited the bathroom often. Um, in fact, a couple of times I just stayed in the bathroom because it was coming every 30 to 40 minutes. And, and, and frankly, there was nothing coming out of me, right? It was just, just heaving. heaving and there was some, some bile, which is a digestive disgusting. And I tried my hardest to be quiet. So I didn't bother you. I'm sure you heard every, every single fr uh, it's thing. It's weird. I heard some of it, but okay. I got not all of it. All right. Well, I, I appreciated that you didn't come in and say, Hey, Grant, are you doing all right? I was like dying and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So I, I tried my hardest just to make it to the dawn, right? To, Cause I didn't want to bug you, but I, I think the sun came up about six thirty, six forty. I waited till about seven and I'm like, Hey dude, um, I, I'm a little delirious. Can you help me kind of call the front desk and figure out where there's a medical clinic or a hospital? I was extremely dehydrated. I was still nauseous yeah. and I, I, I knew something was wrong. So we, we got the ambulance. They, you followed me over. You packed yep. a nice little bag for me. Thank you very much with a change of clothes and some underwear and different things. And But I got checked into the hospital. You were there with me for about two and a half, three hours. Uh, they admitted me with a thing called keto ketoacidosis, which means my body was reacting to the medicine and burning my fat stores too quickly, creating acidic blood. That's so I was turning into a, turning zeno into a xenomorph. xenomorph. Um, I'm lucky that they're lucky they didn't shoot me or nick me because um, I would have eat through the floors. But <laughs> I spent the next four and a half days in a hospital bed, still vomiting, still nauseous. Uh, they were trying to get my acidic level down. I was in the mid 40s when you're supposed to be anywhere from eight to 12. So I was about four times the uh, you know allowable limit. Not great. So, you checked in on me often. I was pretty delirious on Wednesday and Thursday. My wife called very often, but they had just started school. She was trying to make it through till Friday. And her school has no reception. Oh, she, she had, cannot get a text or a cell phone. I had to call her desk phone, phone a few yep. times. And I, I, if I had thought about that, would I would have told you. Um, but ultimately, it ended up working out okay. I, I figured out what was wrong. I'm off the medicines now. I'm back to full health generally. I'm still kind of tired. Um, but it, it it ruined my entire week, right? I, yeah. I didn't I didn't get to go to WBC other than about six hours. Yeah, all of that to say, I played a lot of games. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I absence. expected Alexander to kind of be back in the room, like worrying, pacing. Hell, he was out playing games. You should see the pile of games that he played. It, we're gonna go through them. It's a lot. I'm not bitter if you can't tell. I'm not, I just I'm upset that I missed missed out on the fun. Yes, frankly. and I'm upset that you missed out yeah. too because. A lot of people were asking how you were. Yeah. It was very touching. Yeah. Everyone who said something and was asking after you, uh, you know, what wasn't happening to me, and I wasn't. I was nervous for your health. Sure. A little bit at the beginning. Once they figured it out, yeah, yeah. I felt a bit better. I, but it was still lots of unknown, and yeah, that yeah. can be a little bit scary. I got a lot of texts. I got a lot of uh, Facebook messages. And yeah. Really appreciate that. So yeah, everyone. I didn't respond to a lot of them because I didn't feel good. <laughs> And, and it was so funny in the hospital, they kept pushing my little like portable table, yeah, which had tray. my phone, my water, my puke bag, my glasses. They kept like pushing it away and wouldn't. So I, I was like stuck. I, I could, <laughs> the phone would ring. I'd be like, I, I can't answer it. So terrible. But anyway, 
But I yeah. will shut up for the rest of the time. You can You're going to talk about some games. So basically, I left the hospital around twelve thirty on the Wednesday. Yep. Someone had mentioned that the Flight ninety three Memorial was just up the road, and I thought to myself. I'm probably never going to come out. Sure. At, because where you were at was in Somerset, which we don't usually go to when we're there. So I'm like, I'm already... It was about 20 miles away, right? Yeah, from, which when you're driving on those back roads, it's kind of, kind of a long way. L let me tell you, riding in the back of an ambulance when you're I nauseous... Don't, I don't envy you that. I, I, I thought I was going to die. I'm just going to be <laughs> honest. So I, I, I made a stop there, which makes it sound like, oh, I just kind of like stopped there. All right. I went like another 20 minutes further. <laughs> and so it was an hour back to the hotel. So that was just something that like, I was like, took advantage of, it was there. Very sobering, a, a, a lovely memorial, but it's hard to kind of see some of that stuff again. Oh yeah, it's rough. I, I mean, I've watched, I, I told you, I had watched United 93, which was the movie, and it was very heart I, I, and I, and I, I, I It's too much for A me. lot of it I was dramatized. They, they had some phone calls and some communications, but yeah. you know, they, they figured they had stormed the cabin and, yep. and it, you know, it probably saved hundreds, if not maybe a thousand lives as it was headed. Wasn't that the one that was potentially headed to the White House? I, th I think so, yeah. So maybe not thousands, but, no, but maybe a hundred. But yeah, that was, that was a unique experience is what I would say. Yeah. I don't know if I would recommend doing that after having taken your friend to the hospital. <laughs> uh, so that was very intense. Uh, but yeah, I, I took the opportunity to do that because I'm, Probably never going to go that way. Again. Oh yeah, it was kind of yeah. Out of the way. We, we drive to the Seven Springs. I don't think we leave the place. No, right? not no. not for five or six. <laughs> and next year we're going to try to go for the not next year, the year after we're going to try to go for the whole thing. So. Yeah, yeah, I want to go go big time. So uh, the, I got back to to the resort kind of mid to late afternoon so on the Wednesday, two or three o'clock, something like and that. And I think that <clears> evening, because I, I was just kind of like didn't didn't really do anything for that, for the like, first couple of hours, just kind of like unwind a bit. Uh, but that night, we played... <coughs> oh, you played that Wednesday night. I believe ah. this is what we okay. played. My t okay, if you played with me <laughs> at any point during this week, my timeline is going to be all over the place. Yeah. So if I miss... If it was Thursday morning and you was, thought it was Wednesday night, just go with it. I tried to like cobble it together on the drive home, mm. and I thought, I should have been doing this in real time. <laughs> but I couldn't remember the time from like four days ago, because everything was very intense, and we did a lot of stuff. Uh, but I, we played a four-player game of Fire in the Lake. I um, was able to play with um, some uh, new coin players. Cool, that's always Fire cool. Some Fire in the Lake players. Okay. Um, and it was a really fun experience. I, I, I always love this game. Well, Fire in the Lake, is I, it's my favorite coin. I yes. believe it's yours as well. I, yes, I would agree with that. Well, who did you play? Uh, I played, I was the Arvin. Ah, did you win? No. Okay. The, the VC right. one. I always feel like Arvin win. The the Ar the Arvin win if no one else does. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, VC one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've almost won with VC several times. It's just very challenging. Well, because always the NVA come down and like take two of my bases, and it's like and, ah. And the NVA took that tunnel yeah, base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Like all that it stuff sucks. happened. It was it was really really cool. Uh, but we played kind of all night, a good uh, three or four hours, and it was just it was really enjoyable mm -hmm. to be able to open this big game up to people who hadn't done a lot of it. Yeah. Because I think people get scared off by the size of this one. But it is complex as well. And I, I also yeah. believe this is the one that you've got to play very differently th than some other coin games. You really have to focus on what you're doing, but watch everyone else because they, yeah, they can win very easily. There's a more to consider yeah. in this from a scale It's a deeper size game, standpoint. I think. But I love it so much being able to... to be that door into this for other people was really cool. Yeah. And I, and I love that about this particular game. Had a blast with this one, and I couldn't care less how many times I win or lose. I will yeah, always I, love that I, game. I've probably won once or twice, yeah. maybe three times, but I always have a blast playing it. I feel like also... I could feel, I could feel that yeah. Fire in the Lake I, was going I, on I, Wednesday yes. night. I, I wonder feel I, it. I wrote a list of the games. <laughs> oh, here we go. I also that night played ah, Charioteer. Charioteer. Um, and Matt Calkins was there, wasn't he? If he was, I did oh, not okay. know about that. I thought that. someone said he was there, he or, or I heard that. Not, not that he played with you, but the no. designer, Matt Calkins. But yeah, played a game of Charioteer. This is a fun game. Uh, yeah, it's really fun, and it's a really good convention game. Yeah. Because you just pick it up. Can you play up to six, I think? Yeah. Two to six. And, yeah. and we played, the, I think the first game we played was like four player, 
And then I played this another couple times, six player. Yeah. And it's very like, different it, experience with six. In a, in, a, in a good way. Yeah. Like it's just, there's more. Yeah. There's more stuff going on, more chaos, more madness happening. It, and It's a light, fun game, not a war game, but it, it definitely is fun. Yeah. And, and every time we played it, it was a blast. Yeah. And it was a great game to like slip in for an hour, hour and a half. After we've done some big games or in between some things. Oh, we've got a little bit of time. Let's just do I, I this. I think John C. played this with you. And I saw he had posted on Facebook like, oh, that's a game I wanted to play with you guys. And somebody said, John, you did play with us. I thought that was pretty funny. Yes, he played <laughs> at least one time with okay, us. Okay, got it. But yeah, yeah, really fun game. And we have a video, finally. Yes. Coming up on the blog here probably in 30 days. Sure. Or on the on the YouTube channel. At some point, yeah. There's a video review that I finally finished. Um, that's yeah. That'll come at some point. That's a fun game. Yeah, that was that was a fun game. Not a war game, but it's a fun no. game. Um. Okay. Then we're gonna go to. Well. So, so next day would have been Thursday. Next day would have been Thursday. And what is the vendor hall opened? Right. That's right. I was like, what did I do Thursday morning? Mm -hmm. I spent lots of money. At the I wasn't even hall. there. I wasn't even there, guys. No. I... And, he knew, and he knows I spent lots of money. <laughs> uh, so, let's talk about that because I just don't even doing gaming on Thursday morning. Um, I spent an uncomfortable amount of money. That's actually not well. It is true, but I told myself I wouldn't. And I didn't spend any money. No. So, the first thing that I did when the vendor hall opened was book it to the MMP booth. And part of that is because you never quite know what you're going to get over there. Uh, and I will just kind of pull up some of the stuff that I picked up. So the big thing is that they had announced that they would have Arden 2 there, which was released on pre-order like the next week they shipped and we, it. We had this pre-order. We had right? it on pre-order and they said, hey, cancel you can it. come and buy it and cancel your pre-order. Save five months. You get it shipping. three days early yeah. and, you, and you save the shipping. Um, so I was like, oh, I'm definitely doing that. So I picked this up, Arden 2. Two Mappa SES Bulge game. Game number 25. Yes. In the SES series. And my understanding is, is that this is a remake of yeah. either the first or one of the f earliest in the SES series. Okay. Um, I should know that, but I've forgotten. Uh, it, it's very interesting. The art is very different than some normal MMP fair. Yeah. I. Like, that's really, really nice artwork, right? Yeah, it, it's kind of computer-generated, it looks like, but it does look different and kind of unique, which I yeah. think is cool. Already shot an unboxing for that bad boy. Um, oh, we definitely need to play this yeah. this year. Uh, is it a two-mapper, you say? It is a two-mapper, yes. Okay. But it's... Battle of the Bulge. SES, love the system, really easy. If you've never played an SES game, kind of just pick one that you're, you're going to play from a size and theme standpoint. Yeah. And you're probably going to have a good time with it. Uh, so nice. really pick, picked up that one. I also, okay, they also had these. And we we love the Red Box series. And this is this is part of the reason why I ran to the MMP booth. <laughs> and I will fight you in future years because they had a bunch of these kind of oddball oh, games that older are games. out of production or just kind of harder to find and. I've had a number of these on my Noble Night wish list for a while, and they come in and they go out, and some of them are kind of expensive. I paid, I think, 30 bucks a piece That's for good. each one of pretty these That's pretty good two. value, too. And these are from the Red Box series, um, the series designed by Tetsuya Nakamura, I believe. And we've played Traces of War in that series. From VUCA Simulations. And A Victory Awaits from that, MMP, not was, in a Red Box. It's not that was on box. my top 10 last year, because yeah. it's just a, a good old fashioned Hex Encounter. And, and, not, game. and not overly complicated. Nope. And they have a fast pace of play. So there and was, it's chip pull, right? Yes. Very, we always like chip pull. Very easy to solo. Um, so both of these, it's kind of like, I haven't found them at a price point that I wanted to, and they had a brand new sealed. For 30 bucks. For like 30 bucks That's a piece. And it was like, it, it wasn't even a question. I picked them up immediately. Yeah. And, you know, it's like the only copies that they had, so. So what, did they just have these two? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Otherwise, I would have like if they'd have had more, you know, they never. I never saw them restock nice. those ones. Nice. So I picked up those two, and then part of that they Good next fun. to that they also had Storm Over DMBM Foo, which we played Storm Over Jerusalem and, and really enjoyed that system. Yeah, really enjoyed A the system. Area activation. This uses that same system, but um, obviously it's so this is 1950s DMBM Vietnam with the French and the yes. And, and so apparently this one is like this one. choice. 
A lot of people say it's really the best good. one in the series. Okay. Uh, ben Hulse, he saw that I had bought it and he was like, this has the best card in any war game ever. And it's the one where like the, uh, the, the, the women of pleasure come and it ah. refreshes all your troops in an area. Oh, got it. <laughs> so, nice. Like, <laughs> obviously some humor in that, but they, it, it looks great. And, yeah. And I, I, I want to play it. So absolutely, and, and, I, and I hadn't seen it available for a while in anywhere that was a reasonable price. Again, nice. I think that one was maybe like forty bucks, and it was like not not even a question. Yeah. Um, I also was on the fence. <laughs> yeah, you're not an ACW guy. No, American Civil War is not your stick. We have played several games, but it's not your stick. Yeah, it, I don't get quite as excited about it. However, the buzz for Onto Richmond Two has been. Unreal. And this one just came out this year, like, I believe. I want to say four or five months ago, maybe. Yeah, came out earlier this year. And it was like... It's a big game. Yeah. And, and, and people were talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. And the closer I got to WBC, it just, like, everyone was coming out of the woods saying how r amazing it is. It's this massive chonker of a package. It really has, like, three games in it. Did you say chonker yeah. of a package? Okay. It's, it's very chunky. Very right. chunk. Okay. It's huge. I just, sometimes the words that come out of your mouth, I just don't know. It's like when you say football to describe soccer, I just don't get it. But. Well, here's what I do. I just talk and say it with confidence, and <laughs> most people don't pull you up on it if you get yeah, away with yeah. it. But uh, massive game. I've already unboxed this, and uh, it's a game that I really want to play. Yeah. Because, partly because it's not at a battle level, necessarily. It's at this campaign level, yeah, and so you're doing much more than just, here's my line of guys. It, it's There's a lot more maneuver in it, and not that complicated. No. Which, that was, I don't know why I thought, or I had any preconceived notions about this game, but in my brain it was like some big crunchy game, but th there's a lot of rules, but I think it's approachable. And, and this is, you know, it's a huge series, great campaigns of the American Civil War has been around for many, many years. Yeah, this is volume 13. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like GMT's uh, Great Battles of the American Civil War. They're both very revered series. Yeah, so I bought that. That's great art, by I the way. I actually went back to buy this one because... Okay. <laughs> initially, I bought Stonewall Jackson's Way 2 because it was a little bit smaller, um, but Bull Mike Run. Heckman said this was the his favorite okay, one. Okay, I know he likes and them a he, lot. And he's played a, like all the games in this series and loves them, and I was like, yeah. I trust him. So, I, And then I had this sat in my bag, and I thought, well, I can't not get the new one. Sure, yeah. So I went back and got on to Richmond, too. So. Yeah, nice. I, I, yeah. This might be the first ACW games where I'm like, oh, I really want to play that. And I'm no, like, no, excited no, no. for no, it. No, 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 no. A Most Fearful Sacrifice. Uh, sure, sure. Sure. That game was choice. Also, and you did like that. Also, Battle Hymn Volume One was amazing. Yes. Too. So you you have enjoyed and and have looked forward, but you haven't in in a long time. So no, and and it's, I want to make that clear. Yes, my mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's yeah. The, no, I, I'm, I'm all excited. in. I think I'm all this in. is going to be something. Yeah, I there's a reason that they've been around for so long. So I bought all of those, and we have really dabbled more into MMP games over the past three or four years with yeah. SES and BCS and, you know. The uh, only other game that I bought whilst I was there was 1914 Serbian or Sterbian from GMT Games. Uh, sure, it's a World War so One Ser game. So Serbia, right? Yes. So this is the Austro-Hungarian invasion of Serbia so at the beginning the... of 1914. Yep. Um, and, and I mostly bought this because it was 25 bucks. Sure. <laughs> No, you mostly bought it because we have the Guns of August no, that we're trying to I, start. I really you're didn't. adding to the pile. <laughs> this is added to the pile. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is quite a complex game. Oh, Even okay. though it's a one mapper, I've, been, I've started okay. reading the rules on it. Got it. And it's got a lot of detail in it. But I also, um, I'm like halfway through a book called Catastrophe 1914. And the sections that are on the Austro-Hungarian invasion of Serbia, fascinating. Just so interesting. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? They got this game. It's 25 bucks. If it's crap, 
It's only twenty five. It's only twenty five bucks. I, I'm gonna say those are the the most unimpressive counters I think I've ever seen. It, well, when did this come out? I, it's twenty fourteen or twenty fifteen. Twenty fourteen. But like, yeah. this is very much the last one they have. Look at how warped the counter yeah, yeah, yeah. is. This has probably been sitting in their warehouse for a long yeah, time. Yeah, nice, nice hot Hanford, California. Nice. <laughs> but the, you know what? <laughs> yeah, what what I mean uh, um, eventually in one of our Guns of August events in the future yeah. we'll we'll get it played. Or at worst I'll push it around solo <laughs> And then sell it. Uh, yeah. Or <laughs> it might be like really cool. Sure. That uses the same system as 1914. It's like, there's some French name. I can't remember what it is now. It's like, oh, my GMT as well. Trans, but it's like a huge four or five okay. mapper. It's massive. It was like, never well, played it. To, to, to do a one mapper that. Let's yeah, try it out. Exactly. And see how it is. And I, I'll be honest, we, we've done many, many World War I games over the past couple of years. I've really enjoyed them, frankly. I, yeah. There's only been a couple that I didn't necessarily like, but it's a very, World War I is a very iconic, different different focus than a lot of the other war games we play. It's not World War II, right? There's no. there's really no comparison, and it's just very interesting. Some of my favorite games are, you know, Paths of Glory, and the lamps are going out, wow. and it, I love doing and the and Guns of And that really August. big scale, yeah. always interesting. Yeah, But even cool. when you get it at a close-in scale, you've well, got, like, these, like, old... Almost Napoleonic well, you or got American horses Civil War and, tactics, yeah, I mean, but with modern weapons. Yeah, and then it's you very can see like kind of the beginnings of like World War II squad tactics and stuff. Yeah. And it's this it's this fascinating time of innovation in the war. So yeah, yeah, pick that up. So that I did not do any gaming on Thursday morning because of that because I was shopping a lot. <laughs> but uh, on Thursday, well, after, and, and I think when you were in there, didn't you talk to Mike? Uh, and Grant Wiley, uh, well, or was that later? I, I arranged to speak with them. Okay. I actually did the interview with them later on. So you did a video with them where they talked about some of their new games upcoming. Yes. And so that is either on the channel or it's coming soon. It's coming up, I think, so next sat, week. Sat or the down week with after. Grant and Mike Wiley, and just another Grant, d different yeah, Grant, yes, different Grant. But uh, so that was really cool because we've also been threatening to do that with them for a few for a years, years, and it just never timing wise never happened, but. Being there a little bit longer, it was like, all right, we can squeeze in some more stuff here. Yeah. Um, but later on that day, I played, I played a game of the British way. Um, we played Kenya. Okay. What we and did. that's one of the ones we have yet to play together. Yes, we played Malaya and Palestine. It was the next one chronologically, okay. and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna make you play because he'd never oh, played uh, this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know if he'd ever played coin before or played like one maybe. Well, and, and we love this because it's 90 minutes, right? It's, oh, it's yeah. 90 minutes, very tense, very fast playing, and it's unique, right? It's And Kenya, I think, has some of the more interesting aspects. Well, I, I, I'm consistently blown away. Each new one in yeah. this that we play. Malaya was very cool. Palestine was very fun. And think about how different they were. They were totally different. Kenya, different again. Yeah. Totally. Which is, the gameplay, yeah. totally different. Now, I know the four, there's kind of like paired ones. So I think Palestine and... Cyprus. Cyprus are kind of similar. And then I think Malaya and... Uh, Kenya are supposed to be a little more similar, but th they're different, right? Yeah, th there's the, going to be differences. The, the menus and action choices so within those is still so different. They got their own little unique yeah. bits that it really doesn't feel the same. This is definitely going to be one of my best games uh, of the year. I, I, mean, I, I love it. It might be the game of the year it's, already. It's, it's, it's amazing. You, you have to do a lot to topple this. And, yeah. and we need to play the other two. I, I, we have threatened to do that. We've played two. We're, we're gonna we're gonna get back. We'll get to back it. to it. But yeah. It, Love it. Nice. Got got a game of that, and that was wonderful. And he enjoyed it. Yes. Okay. Good. Really liked it. So you've created another coin disciple. Yes. That's, uh, that's our mission. And and it was funny because we played that because I was like, well, let's just like squeeze that in because I was trying to arrange a game of people power. A three player, and player game. By the time everyone got there, we finished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like I could squeeze that in. And that's great. So yeah, people power. Um, this is the three player coin. Uh, this is the back of the box. For all those interested, um, uh, did you play with the personality cards this time? Yes. Okay. How did that change it? Because we didn't on the first time we played. No. So, so for starters, I played this with Tim Murphy and John C. John C. Okay. is from the Philippines, yep. so he like grew up with all of this stuff on the news, and so mm. that was interesting. He's he like knew more detail about it when yeah. he was, he was drawing. He was like, "Hey, look." This card of this guy 
he like pulls out another card of the photo. He's like, that's his brother who's on this opposing side and defected, which nah. caused this event that I would never have Yeah, known you would have never known that. And, and so that was really cool. But uh, we played with the personalities, okay. which was fine. It just... Aren't they kind of like wild cards that kind of allow you to do some different well, the, stuff? That's, that's the act of desperation. Okay. okay, Which you can... I think you use in like the very last round. Okay. But basically, the personalities just give you like... It's kind of like a momentum card. So like, it's kind of bonus to an ability? Yeah. So okay. one, one of my actions, because I played as the... Um, the, ref, the... The yellow guys. The reformers? Opposition? Uh, yeah, I the played those guys. I played those in our first play. Okay. I'm trying to remember the, the name of the faction. Me, I can't remember. Keep talking. I'll but, find uh, it. I played them, and and it was like one of my the reformers. Okay. Yeah, one of my actions. I could do it. I would. I think when I added guys to the board, I could add more if it was like in a city. Um, okay, yeah. So yeah, it yeah. just made my rally or uh, which is important because you're trying to take away control from the government, or they're going to win. Yeah, so Al almost from the get-go, the government's in, in yes. nearly a winning position. I just fixed the box, by the sure, way. Sure, sure, sure. Sorry. Don't worry. Uh, You'll fix it. I'll undo it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was, and it was a very different type of game from the one that we had experienced okay. when we played it. Um, it do, do you feel you're you're getting more comfortable with it and feel better about it? Because we definitely need to play it a couple more times. Uh, I do. So yes and no. Okay. I'm. S it's very different. Uh, yes, it's it is so very different. different and although it might look and feel like a coin game, <laughs> navigating the actual strategy of the game yeah. is very difficult. And I was sat, we were talking about it afterwards, and the statement was made is that the skill ceiling for this game is much higher than a lot of other coin games. Mm. You have to be like really good at it and be able to assess the board because the game is very brittle and quite fragile. Yeah. Uh, you can like mess it up and lose real quick because some of the scoring is so swingy because mm -hmm. the thresholds are so low. And as such, I'm not very good at it. And sure. so it, it's hard to assess like where I sit with this game. Yeah. Um, I enjoy playing it, but... It's, it's just it, different. It, it, yeah, th there's a lot to consider in this game, that's for I, sure. I, I will say after just our first play, I, I, I'm not sure I would sell this as a intro coin. I would definitely yeah. not. That is the one conclusion that I made and we did talk about. C Cuba Libre is still, in my opinion, the entry coin. People will say, oh, this is, a, it's it's not many cards. It doesn't take and, very And that's long. true, but, but there's a lot of complexity and, yeah, like you said, strategy, strategic decisions that have to be made or the game will go in one direction almost every time. It, there's a lot of nuance yeah. to what you're doing. And, and that's great. I mean, yes. it's, it is good to see it different. It's good to feel that there's a different situation. I don't know that I've ever played the government side or the government forces and felt so powerful as you did when you played the government. Yes. Our first game. I thought, wow. Very challenging. Yeah, and that's mo most coin games are not like that. But I, I actually, I like this. I just need to play it a couple more times. Yes, I think if... And we need to figure out when and where we can yes. play it. Because we've got to get another person. Agreed. Or we could do a bot. I mean, well, we, and we I could try do the bots bot. Yeah, and we could do the goes. bot. But yeah, play the game of People Power. That was kind of... And cool. very cool that you played with John, who's yes. from the Philippines. Yes. I think that's cool. And we did that uh, because we were also waiting to get a f more players to play. The Barracks Emperors. How many players did you play that with? We played this with four. Okay. So I went from two, three, four players. Nice, yeah. We were just playing games to get more players. The Barracks Emperors, completely different kind of games. This is a brand new game from GMT. It's a trick-taking game with it, a historical setting, right? Y yes, but also, like, it is 13 simultaneous trick-taking games <laughs> okay. with this spatial <laughs> element right. that I am very bad at. Okay. But this is not a war game. This is sure. not a Euro game. Historical game. This is an abstract yeah, game but it's with a historical theme, theme pasted, pasted on it. Because the theme is... Well, and it's by the same design team for Time of Crisis, Ray Farrell, Brad Johnson. Yes. And I think Ray Farrell was there. He was. Uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I... That was one I thing I regretted like, uh, because I would have hunted him down and we would have, we would have talked to him. But Next year. Next or the year. Two year years from now. But yes, the... This was, even however bad I was at it, mechanically doing what you're doing, 
I enjoyed it and was having a really good time, yeah. But it, because it's also totally different from everything that we do normally. Got it. And so it was just a fun experience to do that with four players. That's a nice looking game. I mean, the cards are kind of cool. They're cute. They're small. Yeah, there's a little square card. Typical this GMT. Boxed. <laughs> oh, you played with the copy. Yeah, okay. yeah. They had, they had a... They, just, it was the display little, copy that was out. Little square cards, yeah. right? And you're like matching numbers and colors, but yeah. you also have like abilities. the abilities which function differently than in to the time, of, time crisis, of crisis, but have a similar effect. Okay. So like the speculum will like remove a card kind of a thing. Nice. Like the demagogue this, allows this. you to like cover stuff up. I love the speculum. Yeah. One of my favorite cards. So yeah, it, it's, it's fun. It's a fun game. Yeah. Yes. I enjoyed it. I, I mean, would you, would you say that's a game that plays fairly quick. I think it says one to two hours. Does it play in an hour? No. No. Okay, it so it's a little, a little longer. Bit. Yeah, because it, parts of it's it different. become a little bit thinky. Okay. Where you're like, ooh, what's the Taking best your move time. you can assess? And maybe that's the only knock on it is like, it takes two hours and Got it's three it. rounds. And it's like, a small game. Maybe. And... Well, it's not, okay. it's not small, but yeah, I don't know how, I don't know how okay. you would change that in any way. Though. But that was, I think that's that one was, I definitely want to play sometime. Yeah, it's very good. We'll definitely play that. So that was everything on Thursday, and by Thursday I was starting to recover. I was feeling a oh, lot better. Oh, that wasn't everything on Thursday. Sorry. I yeah. played John Company Thursday night. Nice. John Company from Whirly Gig Games. Is that true? Uh, yes. Yeah, Cole Whirly. Yeah. This is a great. This is a great looking uh, game. Yes. I, I didn't get to play it. John Company Second Edition. First off, big shout out to Will, uh, who is English but lives in Australia. He came over. And uh, taught. he loves this game, and he taught it. Nice. Uh, him and Tim taught it to us. A and, uh, and and didn't we play Will and Tim Border Ravers? Yes. Yeah, so that was... We played with them a couple times. Yes. and Or you did. Their teaching of this made this game much more accessible than it would have been. Okay. This would have been an absolute nightmare to learn. And Well, remember Pax Premier? That was a hard game to, to learn. Yeah. This is like that on steroids okay. with how many rules are in it. And if you, because of the way that everything interlocks in this, if you make, if you mess something up, it's going to have significant knock-on consequences. So, so the concept of this game is that you're an investor in the East India company. Yes. Right? And you're a family trying to cement your legacy. Yes. And become rich. Yes. And be taken care of by your prodigy. Right? Yeah, it, it's, it's... It's so good. Uh, this is everything that I love in gaming, period. Negotiation, interaction, yeah, yeah, backstabbing. Like, and then it's like, but there's also like dice rolling mm -hmm. and then voting. And yeah. it has everything in it. And we played this on Thursday night, six player. Um, and it lasted for three out of the five rounds before the company went under. Okay. But we tanked it, it crashed and burned. So first play. First, it was a design. We, we couldn't roll at <laughs> all. We failed. That's pretty typical Starting for Starting with you. me. Oh yeah, and, and I was definitely a, a terrible offender at that. Uh -huh. We rolled awfully. We were unable to like open new areas. We could barely get any money to fulfill orders. We couldn't pay our bills. We couldn't make any <laughs> money. And so the company's standing would go down and down and uh -huh. then it collapsed. Uh, and then there was some scoring at the end, and it was like, yeah. it was a disaster. Yeah, it's funny. But it was so good that we were like, okay, 9 a.m. tomorrow, we're doing it again. Okay. So I went to bed, and I had breakfast, and 9 a.m., we played this again. Uh, With the same players or different people? I think it was uh, Tim dropped out, and we got one new player. Okay. In, uh, which was Colin, I think. And uh, But it was most of the same players, so... Most people were somewhat experienced with it, at least just played it, haven't played it the once. Yeah. And the second time we played it, it went for probably like f just over four hours, and the company did extremely well. We kept it going all the way to the mm -hmm. end. We went through five turns, and everyone made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it, I have, I have never yelled and screamed so much in a game in a long time. Well, the the the. The story that I've heard is that there was a roll that you had about a 90% chance of making. Yeah. You probably had to roll, what, a three so, on a, or a four on a... So you have to roll one success, and I had 
at least five dice. Okay, so and chances you roll are a five or a six. Chances are pretty good. Yeah, and they give you a chart to say if you okay. have this many dice, like 90%. this is your likelihood, okay. and it was like over ninety percent. But like, but I, I heard you rolled. Oh my gosh, you failed, and you ran out of the room into the stairwell and screamed obscenities. Yes, and but that had, lamented your bad roll. That had happened because that was the very last military campaign that if we had succeeded would have opened up the like the opium trade in China, mm. which we would have made so much money off of and everyone would have been more well off. Got it. And what made so, that more important is that <laughs> for about, I don't know, 15 minutes before all of that, Mike Heckman and I were standing across the table mm -hmm. arguing very loudly about he was he was trying to hold up the military operation. Okay. Because he was like, what are you going to give me to let this go through? Because he was going to deny me the resources to even make the roll. I'm like, this helps all, all of, of us, us, including you. And he's like, yeah, so make it worth my while. Otherwise, no one gets anything. <laughs> and we were just like yelling at each other. All in good humor. We're very yeah, good yeah. friends. But it was... <laughs> I kept us at the table. It's like, whoa, uh, that's funny. And and and, and I and I like paid him off. I gave him a couple a uh, couple of pounds and, uh, and and did all this. And then I cocked up the roll. <laughs> and so it was just, it couldn't have been more poetic. So, it was wonderful. So you make it sound as if it's a cooperative game. It's not cooperative, right? You're working together. It, it's this, it's like this weird semi-co-op thing. Okay. It's because but you're still trying to come out on top. Yeah, Somebody's trying to one, be the richest. One person wins. Okay. But you if, can all lose if, together. Oh, very. But yeah. someone can win if you lose. Got if the it. company okay. goes under, whoever's got the most victory points still wins. Got it. So there, there are players who are like building workshops and like betting against the company basically, and are trying <laughs> to tank it because they've got a whole bunch of power outside of the company. But they're got like, it. it's not the rest of you. But oh, the, the so thesis good. of the game, where you're trying to get all this money, so that you can pay for all of your old relatives in their expensive stately retirement homes is so horrible and so like underhanded. So English. Because you're just like <laughs> destroying the Indian subcontinent and taking sure. all of their resources. Isn't so, that what colonialism oh, is yeah. about? Okay. But like doing that, some of the things that you say in the game, you're like, this is awful. I would yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and, and then you're like, there comes a point where you're like, you don't have enough money to pay for these guys. And you're like, what have you ever done for me sitting there <laughs> just taking up my money and resources sure. to the poorhouse with you yeah, and, and they get kicked out of this stuff. like it, it's that's funny it's a wonderful game so much everything you do there's a negotiation or like you're trying to bribe people or you might agree to do something for you and it screws over someone else because yeah, they yeah. want it in there this is everything got it uh, and it was wonderful I desperately want to play this. And this is a second edition that had like updated rule book and, yes. and updated components. It is really pimped out. It's beautiful, frankly. Yes, it, it was wonderful. I got this on Kickstarter like a year and a half ago. Desperately want to play this at yeah. San Diego Historicon. Yeah. Hopefully with Cole, if you're watching That would Cole. be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, that was one of my favorite gaming experiences at WBC. Yeah. So we played that. So this is Friday again. Yes. That was Friday morning. And then we very coolly <laughs> rolled that into a game of Here I Stand, nice and casual. Uh, we played Here I Stand probably from like three till ten. Oh, wow. Um, this game... How many we, rounds did you get completed? Um, we played... So Usually I feel like it's over in four to five. Uh, yes. Which someone I told people and they were surprised at it and then that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, we basically didn't play out the fifth round because it was very late and I... I think we, I was the Ottomans, mm -hmm. so I went first, did a bunch of stuff and did some piracy, and I'm like, I, I had a very strong lead, yeah. and I had a very strong hand of cards, and no one could do anything against me, <laughs> and so it was between me and the Protestants, the Protestants were also in an extremely strong position, uh, and so one of us was going to win, and so we just kind of, instead kinda of going through it. the rigmarole, we just kind of called it, yeah, so... Yeah. Um, but yeah, we played this. We love Here I Stand, there's no doubt. One of my favorite games of all time. One of the best multiplayer games. Absolutely love it. Love the theme. Love what you're doing in it. And what was nice is that... This is my game. I'm yes. fixing the box because you're <laughs> so, ridiculously uh, eating it up. Mike played as the English. Okay. And I played as the Ottomans. So we've played it a bunch before uh, and together as well. And then the other four players were... 
gentlemen who they they wanted to play it, um, and they had all they played like a dummy turn. They played like one turn of it to try and learn it, and then so we were like, "Well, yeah, here's the opportunity in. to play it," and they were like, "Oh, amazing!" So they were, even though they were new players, they were trying to do cool things okay. and explore and play with the game because yeah, yeah, they yeah. were experienced enough which, war gamers which to is, know. Which is cool, but I will say this about here I stand. If certain players don't do certain things, certain factions can run away with it. Sure, sure. If the Ottomans aren't hard on the Habsburgs, they can run away with it. Yes. If the French do too much against the Habsburgs, the English can run away with it. I, it's, it's a wonderful balance. It is. Which and, comes with experience. And we've played with new players. We've played with bad players. And it's interesting to see how the games turn out. Yeah. Um, there, there's still two factions that I've never played. I've never played the Papacy. And I've never played the Ottomans. And we we dealt the factions randomly. Randomly. I was hoping for the papacy. And, but and actually, it didn't happen. I feel like we do that a lot too. And I keep getting the English, the Habsburgs, or the French. I, I just keep getting them over and over again, which is fine. They're fun. But great game. I'm glad you got to play it. I'm really jealous. And like every time that we play this, there are those like standout moments and oh, stories. Yeah. Like, I, we still have video footage know, of me as the Habsburgs. Dead. Rolling like what, twelve or thirteen dice, and I needed like seven hits, and I rolled like eight or nine fives and sixes. I mean, it was to like, defeat the Ottomans and kind of seal them off from doing anything. Yeah, they were done at that it was, point. It was awesome, but I had the Pope like the Pope bless the a dice. Little, I mean, it was role playing and hilarious. So yeah, great game, I, love it. I, I wonder, this is the one that I'm mad. I'm the most mad that I missed. I think, yeah, but uh, which is fair. It, it is it what was, it is. It's a stunning experience as always. Great Thank game. you, everyone who played with me in that. Because I wasn't sure we were going to get it played because it's both long and requires yeah. a lot of players. And then it just kind of all it came to it a head where came, everyone yep. was like, oh, nice. sweet. We'll do it. Let's do it. So, that, so was, that was Friday. That was, oh, yes. And we finished the night with a charioteer. Another charioteer. Uh, <laughs> so you moved to Saturday. Saturday, which was the last day that I kind of did anything. Um, I played... Uh, Twilight Struggle Red Sea. And normally, I do not play two player games at conventions. Mm -hmm. um, but th it just happened to be that you weren't there, and this, I was waiting because we were playing Pendragon at nine, spoiler alert. And so I was just kind of kicking around, uh, and a gentleman, I can't remember his name, and I feel really bad about it. But uh, he, uh, he had this set up, and he'd been teaching it, because he yeah. loves this game. It's a great game. And he'd like submitted it to WBC to start a tournament oh, for nice. next year. So hopefully that gets approved, because this is really, really good. Uh, so he taught me how to play it, and we played a little session of it. It's a two-turn mini Twilight Struggle. Takes about an hour. At the longest. 45 minutes. We played it for yep. about 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, and, and our game last Saturday was about 40 minutes. Yeah. And, and, and it is... It's staggeringly good. Oh, it's very good. Uh, I got rolled when we played it. Because it's not. it's Twilight Struggle. It's the same mechanics that you know. Yep. With a completely new deck. Yes. That does completely different things. Very different. Which is very interesting. And then they, on top of that, they throw a couple new mechanics in. Right? You have uh, drought tokens. There are... What are the two that have, like, flashpoint areas? Yes, yeah, so there's flashpoints. There's War, the famine tokens. Things can... And then you've got the sea lane. So there's really three different unique... And the space race act. So it's a yeah, a little bit different. The bonuses are different, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I enjoyed the heck out of it. We, we played it. I, I want to play it again. Um, yeah, we played this separately afterwards. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah I, not a WBC. I was I was feeling better by now, but yeah, great I, game. I, I played this, I was, and I'm really grateful as well. Because it yeah. it's been on the shelf for a while and it just never came up. And I was like, you know what, be opportunistic about it. And he sure. told me... Really, really good. Really glad that we did that as well. Yeah. Uh, and we talked to Jason Matthews about it at Gen Con, yes. too, because we had dinner with him, and we're like, bravo, man. Because I, I just thought it was like a, a money grab, right? I mean, it's a... it's I'm a very sure, yeah. Well, it's a very popular game. I think it's on, like, the 10th or 12th printing. Very popular. And I'm like, okay, they just made another game to try to mill another... But they but didn't. They really didn't. It, it, it takes the system... 
Very familiar, but they change it up, and it's so unique and interesting, but, and plays in 40 you minutes. you get the same tension. Yep, the same palpable and tension. And the difficulty of it. No e doubt. Even though it's like 16 spaces and two yeah. rounds. Yeah, very good. A, a, a huge feat. I, I want to borrow that because I want to write some stuff on yeah. it. I want to do a series on it. So I kind of played that, and then everyone showed up for Pendragon, nine. and we played Pendragon. This is the second one I regret, because uh, I love Pendragon as well. And this was a very interesting game. Uh, it did not go very long. Who did you play as? Uh, I was the uh, Saxons in this one. Okay. And, and, and I'll, I'll be honest, we've played it like three or four times. You've played it on Vassal a lot more. Yes. I feel like it either goes really long, or there's like some screwy event in the middle that really dinks it up. Remember the Ducks? Uh, debacle when we played with Mike yes. where I, we had to remove like half the yeah. ducks on the board yep. and it like gave control to everyone else and it was so, over. So that was a kind of... I, we were just like going around doing all of our stuff and then it, we got to an Epoch card and the Kiwitates won because we hadn't done enough um, control and population mm. damage to mm -hmm. them, which I'm like yeah. How did I do that? Yeah, yeah. No, normally, I don't even think about it because I just raid so hard. Sure. And and I guess I'd done a few too many raids into the, like zero control areas because I was trying to rather than I was trying, trying to, to take away from them. Yeah, I, I, got had, it. I had done a bunch, but I was trying to get people to put out war bands. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was invading into places that weren't hurting the Kiwatates as much. And, and so, they yeah, they ended up winning, which Hilarious. is fascinating, but I, I always love playing this game. This is such a unique entry into the coin series. I, I, I don't care what anybody says. It is really good. It's totally different. It's very unique and very interesting. I, I think I've played it four times, three times, and I just love it. I, yeah. I absolutely yeah. love it. It's, it's, I don't know what I'm doing in it, Yes, but I love it. It is very complex. Yeah. Uh, it has a, a lot of chrome in it as well. Well, the, the rating and the, the booty, I mean, it's just, it's insane. And it, it has, like, the whole battle sequence, yep. which is hilarious, because that's something I complain about in Falling Skies, but apparently this one I don't care. Uh, yeah, because it is very, like, you run up to the fort, you take some losses. You you fight at the fort, you take some losses. You you do, Yeah, it's just yeah, really it's, interesting. Or, like, if if you're allowed to, you can make a coup de main roll. Yeah. What does that do? But then even when you feel, fight a field battle, the order in which all of your units Very fire different. and their different strengths, do you have a bonus because if it's your home terrain? Like, all, all this stuff. Yeah. So we got to play this. It was... Unfortunately, it was a short game. We played a couple sure. hours, but it was still really good. Did and Mike was, Heckman play with you? Uh, he played. Yes, he okay. And he was the because he, he loves Pendragon. Yes, I th in fact, I think that's the only coin game he Actually, really and, enjoys. And I really like playing this with Mike because he is very knowledgeable about. Oh yeah, he, he's it. good. And so he's a really good kind of GM Resource, almost to play yeah. it with because he yeah. helps it go along. So I'd be like, oh, I don't remember. Well, more more game. This is a fine fine entry into the coin yeah. series. She should be very proud. I absolutely crushed it with this one. But again, then maybe not your first coin. <laughs> Yeah, pr probably not yet. <laughs> but it, it's worth dabbling it could, it because be. it's unique and interesting. It could be, but so. uh, know that uh, that is very different from a lot of the other games yeah, in the yeah. series. Uh, we played that. I played Pendragon. Oh, then we played Pericles. And we've played Pericles like three or four times in the past 18 months. Yes. And I, I love the game. I just have no idea what I'm doing. And I also, see, here's the thing. I do know what I'm doing, but I can't roll crap at all. Uh, there's no dice rolling in this one, but you roll cards and uh, yeah, yeah, and you the other guys always end up getting a plus five to their and you get like and a that's, one. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, we weren't at war. Uh, no one went to war the first turn, <laughs> so we were just kind of fighting with the Delian League and the Peloponnesian League. And did you use my copy or did you use a copy there? We used the library okay. copy. All right. Um, and so. We, it's, a, it's quite full though, because you have the nice... Well, I have the cube for me, and oh, the yeah. only, my only complaint about it is these card packets are too big, and that's, yeah, that's what sticks up. So I've thought about just saying fooey on that and putting, putting them yeah. back in the bag, but the tray, really, from cube, really nice. There are two of them, and there's plenty of room. But really well organized, really a beautiful game. Oh, but I don't like these. Sure. I don't like the card deck holders. They're too. They're too fat. They don't need to be that fat. It's yeah, and, and it's funny because most of the other tall. games they totally fit in. So I may take these out now and just put them in the nice baggies you've got and put them back. But, but yeah, we played anyway. that. And in like turn one, I pretty much lost the game. Okay. One of Mark Herman's 
finest games, I believe. Yes, yeah, very so different good. type of game. Much more a war game than Churchill. Oh, yes. Same kind of system. It's still a massive level, but it's uh, less abstract. You've got so different good. pieces, and you're moving them in, and all that we, kind of stuff. We played it at WBC last year, and then we played it at Basement, Basement Con. Con this year in March, and now you played it again. I, I regret missing this one. Yeah, too. and this was so fun, fun, but like the, so good. the first battle that we did, we had a... I had a catastrophic loss. <laughs> and that can because, be very bad. Yeah, I didn't very have enough bad. strength to go, and I rolled a two, and they rolled a five, and it was like, I lost five guys, so I lost that much honor, yep, and they that, gained that much honor, that and then I was kicked out from being the lead faction. Like, it had, Just uh, snowball. It was a disaster. Yeah. It was uh, not good. But yeah, Pericles, always love playing it, and I think it was yeah. new to, or new okay. enough to some of the people there as well. Okay. Great game, though. Uh, then we also played Charioteer that night. Again. Yes. <laughs> when did you play Time of Crisis? Time of Crisis was the very last game that okay. I played. So we played that. We got done with Charioteer at about 10.30. Oh, wow. And everyone was kind of like, oh, let's just kind of pack it in. Or like, uh, everyone was unsure. And I was like, well. Time of Crisis is amazing. I was like, I got Time of Crisis upstairs. Yeah. Now, this is my little sad copy of Time of Crisis. I've got the big... We used your box. one, oh, okay. which has the expansion in it. It does, yes. Uh, because uh, one of the players was new, Mark. He'd never played before. Uh, but two of the people... Such a good Tim game. and Mike, different Mike, uh, they had played, but not with the expansion. And so I was able to whip it out. We played it. We played the short game up to 40... Um, Prestige or Legacy is what it's called, uh, just because it was. And I late. feel like the sweet spot is like the 60s. 60s, the 60s best. 60s kind of. It was also. We were, oh, I know. We were starting at 11 it was p.m. 11 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> what time did you finish? Uh, 12. We played about an hour. Okay. Oh, yeah, I think it was like just after 12. But yeah, like ran upstairs, got it, came and set it up, and we're like, let's go, go, go. We nice. played it a really fast clip because everyone was pretty canny about the game. Uh, even Mark, who'd never played before, I'm like, hey, look, it's a. It's a Deck building game. Yeah. And like, this is where you get your points. And he was like, got it. And he was really good and was up and running. Very fun. Um, it, it was wonderful. It was great. I love it. And it was, it was also interesting because we had a, uh, like a, a theoretical debate about the barbarians in this game. Mm -hmm. Because. And I have my own feelings about the Barbarians. Yes. And what are your feelings about the Barbarians? If you don't have the Barbarians attacking you and attacking you fairly regularly, you're going to lose the game. I agree. Because the VP that you get, you'll get like three or four B VP, because it's like per you Barbarian get, you counter get, you kill. You get two for a battle, regardless okay. of who you're fighting, and then you get one for every Barbarian counter. Yeah, so, so it can be four and five, maybe six VP, and frankly, near the end of the game, I'm begging for him to attack me. Yes. Like, please roll my number so the Salucids attack me, or, or uh, please. And when they attack someone, I'm like, damn it, they're going to get five VP. That's my only concern with the game. You see, and that's that's kind of what we went into in the game, is that other players at the table were kind of poo-pooing the barbarians. Uh, and I said, if you don't oh, fight the barbarians, you you're will gonna lose. lose. And I won that game. <laughs> Uh, but like, and I, and I actually, I, I kind of hate it because I've seen people like do nothing but fight the barbarians. They get two or three territories and they just get the barbarians all the time and crush them. But you have to be the emperor to win. Oh, you, so you're you have right. have to make that you final do gamble. Something. And so you can't just sit there and do it. But I yeah. was like, I was like, you need to mill the barbarians. Oh, yeah. And especially in the expansion where you have that victory card. Yeah. That doubles your VPs for the barbarians yep. that you kill. I'm like, yep. And Mark got it, and he was like, he didn't get to use it because he got it really late. But I'm like, we walked through in theory. I'm like, you're going to pick up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legacy. Yeah. You can't get eight legacy anywhere else. It's very hard to get eight. That's like the your... only way you're going to get eight, eight legacy is if you are the emperor and you have like three or four territories. Yeah. You might then get six. Yeah. But like... eight is a lot. I, I will also say the Fodorati card is really powerful when there are barbarians out. Because I've done that where I've added those dudes to my army and then I go crush the hell out of somebody yes. and take their territories. That's also very powerful. I'd rather fight them, but well, if the Fodorati comes up at the right time, you can really go on a run. But it's also is a trap in the sense it's Somewhat. That if I only use that when there's a stack of barbarians. Uh, I, I, I'm going to take one and then fight them. Yep. If you have just one barbarian and you get them into your stack, 
You're an idiot. That was three victory points you should have picked yeah, up. Very That's true. That's stronger than picking up the gun. It is. And, and but, but what I would say is there's been a couple of times near the end of the game that I've played that, gotten two or three barbarians and made my stack really good. And then I had that, was it Force March? Yes. Where, where you can, can like move in, attack, and, you and then you can again. move again. Yes. And it's... That can be or really. Or you can attack twice. Right. If you're right. In, that in that can be really powerful. Yeah. It's, but but it's it's uh what do you call that there's situation? Some, there's some nuance to it. There is. And, and that's what I and love. I love about that. This I game. love this game. It is not that complicated. No, but, but there's when you a lot add of depth. in the expansion expansion stuff. Your options suddenly are like really wide, and you're like, ooh, ooh. And the expansion, and they've got. There's a new expansion coming out. Which I'm excited for. And the which, deluxe edition, right? The deluxe, which has some additional improvements to add to your repertoire. And then there's some new cards. Have so, they released what the the buildings are and what I, they do? I I, I, I think I looked, looked at. I'm not sure it see. has. I'm not sure it has all the details. Because that's that. I'm very curious about what the new. That will be are. one that we will get immediately and and add Play to buy immediately. And you need to get. We need to just buy you the three inch box and. Well, the deluxe edition. And the expansion. So you they, can keep that, and I'll just keep your three inch box. No, I, I. Yeah, you're right. Good point. But yeah, this Great was game. the last game. One of my favorites. End on a high because it's nice and easy and relatively light compared to all the other stuff we played. Yeah. So that was all the games that we had played. Oh, did I mention this? You did no. the challenge coin from so MMP. This is the BCS challenge coin. Um, I'm very jealous. They were giving these out just like with any purchase, basically. So I bought a bunch of stuff and this came with it. Um, it's just a cool coin. It has like numbers etched on the edge to use as like a counter for like countdown of abilities and things if you need it. But it's just, and we've enjoyed the BCS cool system. Coin. We played uh, Air Court yes last year, and since we've bought like Brazen Chariots and what other one do we buy? You have um, Panzers. No, I can't remember the one I have. But you have it was a, is it Baptism of Fire? Did yes, that that's the one okay. I have. Yep. But yeah, that was that was cool. And then I also, I also bought my extremely cursed dice tower, which was also from MMP as well. Did they responsibly source that human skull though? That's what I want. So know. this is this is made. Uh, and this is three D printed. Uh, these are designed and made by uh, their son, uh, who I hope they don't mind saying. How much did this cost? He has ASD. Uh, I don't care how much this cost. Okay. Uh, because um, I. It's kind of cool. Well, yeah. My son also has ASD, and I was like, yeah, if, uh, absolutely. It was 45 bucks. <laughs> Got it. That's not, I mean, no. That's how pretty cool. cool is it? And we used it for John Company. I uh, used it for Here I Stand. And it's cursed. And it is the most cursed thing I've ever rolled in. <laughs> I, I have the worst rolls, and. You have the worst rolls yeah, anyway. Yeah, and so but... I'm like, so I don't care about you using something cursed, because yeah. it's bad anyway. And this is just like a very fun piece. Yeah, kind of unique. Use it for D&D as well. Like, it's, it's, a, it's fun. Yeah. But yeah, I had a, I had a really good time. Uh, playing all those games, I am very sad that you missed out on some of those. Sure. I know you would have loved. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, probably the, all the, of them. But the John definitely. Company, Pericles, Here I Stand, Time. I mean, all those games I yeah. love. And my guess is, had I been there, we might have even played something else. You know, it would have been a different mix. But I would have loved to have played every single well, yeah. one of those well, things. Think about the games that we took. Oh, we things took like time. Maori and Conquistadors. I didn't but, want to play those without you. Sure, big and multiplayer so like, games uh, that just look kind of. So those didn't make yeah, it to the table. We'll, we'll get them. But yeah, those. And we'll get them. I'm like, I got Border Ravers next year as well. Like, sure. Oh, that, it's, that, that was really fun. I really want to yeah. play that again. Well, and just to wrap up, my so, so finally on Friday afternoon, I started feeling pretty good. I was done with the vomiting. Uh, my head was not hurting. My numbers had come down. My diet, my sugar level, glucose level was coming down. I had uh, chicken broth. Um, on Friday, first thing I'd eaten in like four, three days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eaten. Um, had a little mashed potatoes and uh, some some pudding. My wife came on Saturday. They let me out Sunday, and and we had a long, very long six hour drive yeah. home. I, I I think well there my blood sugar's low. It's not a text message, yeah. people. He can't yeah. turn it off. Yeah, so, so don't complain about. And it. I don't want to turn it off. I want to know where I am, but. Really missed out. I, we would have loved to have done a video or two on the way back, and but we can't go next year. No, uh, you're going to be out of the country. I'll be out of the country. And I don't. Reunion at that time. I don't think I'm going to travel over there by myself. That's just. I think too you much. should. Maybe I, I think will. You should. I got to think about it, but. 
But anyway, I love WBC. I still love WBC. I look forward to going to uh, in the future. So yeah, we'll be back there 2025. And yeah. I think we're talking about going the whole like 10 days. Yeah, that, that'll be uh, My wife's amazing. got two years to prepare for sure, like, yeah. Italy, but damn it. Yeah. Because we go and I have such a good time the whole time. And I'm like, What's not to love about it? Well, yeah. Wall to wall games, if, if great I, people. If I went, we went from Tuesday to Sunday, what's one more day off work? And then you just go on the Friday night, the yeah. night before, and then. Yeah, we could even leave like at five o'clock after work and get there at midnight and check in and go to bed. Right? I, think, I think it starts on the Saturday. It I does, think. yeah. So, it does. That, yeah. So, yes. WBC 2023. A very mixed bag of emotions, that's for sure. <laughs> I, th I came home and was, like, exhausted just from yeah. the well wishes of people and, like, a lot of unknowns. Well, you but had also to pack everything up and having take a good everything. time as yeah. well. It was kind of all over the place. Yeah. Really, there was a couple of things that, you know, didn't happen as a result of that. We were supposed to play Savannah with Mark Mikolos. Yeah, that was sad. Which... I, we kept, we'd like push it back a day and back a day and back yeah. a day. And it was just, it ended up having been a write off. Because he, I was like, well, I maybe could sub in and play. And he was like, no, he wants yeah. to do it with us. So, well, and we're going to do that. We're actually going to do that uh, over Vassal and Discord with him at the end of the month. Yes. So we've got that scheduled. We need to bone up on it because he's going to yeah. crush us. Oh, that's. And, but I think I'm going to play either the. Either the Americans or the Spanish, and you're going to play the Americans. Or is the Americans the French? I believe. Yeah, French. I'm sorry, I said Spanish, but uh, that's Pensacola. But uh, looking forward to that kind of interaction. And that's, and that's with what us. he wants to see. Because you kind of share a deck, and you have to decide who's going to play what and you cards. Share all the resources and yeah, everything. Pretty interesting. I think that'll be fun. And then I, we had planned to try and play um, Burning Banners with Chris Mola, but he couldn't yeah, make it either. He, he had. Uh, some issues, so and so that's that was really sad because that was something I was looking forward oh, yeah. to. Oh yeah, very much looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, so there's lots of things that didn't happen, lots of things that did happen, kind of all over the place. Hopefully, it's never like that again. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I look forward to going back in a well, couple like, of years time. Like for sure. MacArthur said, I will I will return. So <laughs> yes. I will be there again someday soon. Yes. Uh, so thank you everyone who had well wishes for Grant. That was very nice to hear the outpouring yep. of uh, kind of community. And that helped me. I well mean, that, those kind of things help. So. And uh, thanks for everyone who gamed with us, everyone who taught any games, or who just like sat in and played with us. Um, even if you just came up and said hi, yeah. it makes it adds to the joy of that um, whole experience. Yeah. So WBC 2023 was. <laughs> A wild one. I had a really good time. Sadly, <laughs> I had a great time as well, uh, alone in my ho hospital room. But, but uh, either way, appreciate you very much for tuning in to us, uh, and uh, thanks for watching. I'm Alexander for the And I'm Grant.